This is Pat Solver with the Dr. Ways In, and we're doing a Google Hangout on air today with Tom Giannulli, who's a physician and a, 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 a techno geek. Uh, I, I don't know if I got that right, but um, yeah. Tom, I thought we'd start out by having you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's dive into Cario. Um, I know you're the CMIO at Cario, and talk about the kind of work that you're doing there uh, in terms of innovation. So um, let's start out by having you tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a physician by training. I'm an internist. Uh, I also have a master's in biomedical engineering, which is kind of a multidisciplinary uh, program where you learn mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software, and uh, material science, and kind of pull that all together to, to work on things like the artificial arm, artificial heart, things like that. So. Uh, my background is technology, um, healthcare, and um, I've had several startups in that space, uh, mostly around mobile computing. So I had the first, developed the first EHR on the Apple Newton, which you may remember from a long time ago. <laughs> I do. And I developed the first EHR on the um, Pocket PC and uh, the first EHR on the Apple iPhone. Uh, all of them were released, and then they subsequently purchased by other companies. So um, the, the iPhone app was actually purchased by Hippocrates. Oh, okay. And, and uh, I understand you worked for Hippocrates for a while. Yeah, so for three years that product blossomed into an EHR, which is full kind of enterprise system-wide EHR, and that's really the basis for the Cario EHR, is the, that Hippocrates product. So oh. We, Cario inherited that from, from Hippocrates about three years ago. Oh, oh, okay. And um, so uh, you, you're still practicing, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And uh, so tell us about Cario. What are you up to there? So Cario has um, obviously taken the EHR in its rudimentary form from the property. It's really added a lot of components, features, upgraded a lot of the technology, and plugged it into their platform. The platform is basically uh, practice management, RCM, patient engagement tools that all kind of configured on the same technology uh, space. So that was. Well, I just want to interrupt because I just want to point out uh, to people who may not know Cario that your audience, your clients, are really small practices, right? right. You're not aiming for the Kaisers or the Geisingers. You're aiming for the onesie, twosie, threesie, foursie kind of practices that right. are out there. So we're, we're folks in the one to ten physician marketplace. Different specialties kind of cover a lot of them. We have about thirty to forty thousand providers on our network today. So um, obviously, focusing in areas that like Epic is not focusing, for example. But um, so that technology is constantly evolving. Physicians are changing the way they practice from fee -for service to concierge to a hybrid. Um, new new models like urgent care or new practices like urgent care are becoming very popular. And all those customers are coming to us asking us for new and enhanced capabilities. Um, we obviously are very interested in, in adding these capabilities as well as keeping up with technology since we're a true cloud solution. We have the opportunity to work with a lot of mobile devices and other technologies. So is your EHR mobile or are you, does it still require a PC or a, or a laptop? No, it's actually uh, mobile first. We actually developed it on the mobile platform first and then moved that to the web. So we actually built it as a native iOS app on iPad and, and iPhone and then created the web app in HTML5. And so we've kind of continued with that theme and so the product is very well mobile entrenched. Um, and um, one of the things we just released in the last release was an Apple Watch application that I would show you today, but I don't, I don't have the demonstration system working on my current computer. Okay, uh, you mean I could do my electronic record off my iPhone? Well, I mean, you, off my uh, Apple Watch? It's not so much the record. It's certain things that you want to do at a glance. So, for example, you can quickly see if you're running uh, five minutes late for a patient. It tells you five minutes before the patient arrives, uh, that they're in the room. It tells you that you're five minutes late or they're on time. And it escalates those alerts, so you actually try to keep you on track. And then you can use uh, instant responses by tapping by saying, I'm going to be five minutes late. And then the front office can reset the calendar and the patient's expectations as to when you're going to be seeing them. So a lot of it's around workflow and uh, organizing things around simple glances uh, and kind of a simple messaging tool on your wrist. 
And uh, so where do you see that going? Would, do, you, do you see that one day uh, I could actually get hints about diagnosis or reminders about medications uh, you know, that the patient's on just by tapping my watch? Do you think it'll get into the clinical arena or do you think it'll stay more in the workflow arena? Well, I think the patient side of it will grow rapidly. What the physician can do on the watch is somewhat limited in that you're not going to be doing full charting on your Apple Watch. It's just too small a screen to really get much information through it. But we've developed um, a tool to record um, notes using the uh, audio portion of the watch. So, for example, we're, we're building kind of a scribe tool where you can actually use the watch to enter data just by talking to your watch at the end of the encounter. And then that information is then entered into our system. So we can actually leverage that technology to enable a new workflow for the doctor that's very efficient um, and can simply dictate through his watch. And so, Tom, I, I mean, these things sound really cool. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun. Uh, my mm -hmm. question to you is, I, I'm assuming you're in a small practice yourself. Is that right. the case? True. So Same are you, are you using the these doctor. tools? Are you using the Cario tools? Sure, I use it pretty much every day. I get, I have to do something for somebody at least once a day, uh, even though I am uh, four days a week in Cario. Uh, the Fridays I have my uh, day to practice, so I do some things while I'm at work, and then obviously Fridays I use it. But um, yeah, I've been using it for years, actually. Very happy with it. Oh, okay, good. So, so you're a you're a pleased customer. Oh yeah. Well, if I'm not pleased and I have control over. <laughs> in it. Seems like they, have, they have real problems. Right. So um, just tell us a few words about w where you think things are going to go from here in terms of services that you provide to the small practices. Uh, I know ICD-10 is coming up pretty soon. Um, and even though there's been a little reprieve uh, for the docs in terms of, of how accurate they have to be in the first year, uh, they are going to have to implement ICD-10. Uh, are, are, is Cario doing anything to help the docs with, um, with, with this? Yeah, in fact, we already released our ICD-10 package, the first phase, phase of it. The second phase will be kicked off uh, sometime around October. But the first phase, basically, when you go into the system today and you code a diagnosis, it'll let you do the typical ICD-9 coding, but it also says, would you like me to convert that to 10 for you? And it gives you a series of choices that are related to the nine code that are in 10. And so you can dual code your, your diagnoses today, which is a good practice to get into to get comfortable with the ICD-10 variations. And it also dual codes that patient. So let's say October rolls around and you want a patient to, to be billed out for a procedure that you just did. You don't have to go back into the chart and, and go back and recode everything. It's actually been coded because you started using it six months beforehand and have a lot of your patients already coded who, who are return visitors. So it makes it a little bit easier. And people really, once they start using it, they go, wow, that's really easy. I mean, I, I can't believe there's so much fear and distress over something that is really one or two clicks to resolve. And in fact, it really isn't that big a deal for most docs that use uh, ICD-9, ICD-10. It's, it's more of a billing concern. But for a physician's perspective, they can simply code it in 9 and click a button and it goes to 10 automatically. So it yeah. um, sounds like you guys are doing great stuff for the small practices, and it uh, sounds like you're having personally a lot of fun. Uh, sure, so I sure. uh, really want to thank you for joining us today and for updating us on Cario. Sure, it's my pleasure. Thank you for, uh, for having me on.